Welcome back. My name is Onoko. I have special eyes. My brand. You're a beast. I'm a beast. And this is Onoko Reacts. Just joking. I would never call my channel something that like corny. <laughs> but I'm Onoko. Welcome back. What I need to start doing before a video begins is saying, um, on my Instagram or any other platform rather than YouTube. Well, actually, no. Yes, on YouTube. Leave down below if there's anything you would want me to react to. And definitely drop a subscribe because that is the best way you can support me. And if you don't like anything I'm doing, don't do any of that. Free will. But today we have Kenna, I think. Kenna, Bridge of Spirits preview. And I saw Spirits and it intrigued me. So let's go. And Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. You venture through the already liking the art design kind of looks like Legend of Zelda and I've never played a Zelda game. Land surrounding a village not. beset by calamity. Whatever happened in the past, it has left some of the land corrupted and spirits of the people who lived there stranded with unfinished business. Mm. As a spirit guide, you're charged with tracking down those spirits and helping them. But that I'm not going to lie, this is going to be very esoteric, but that sounds a lot like Earth. Also means battling them as twisted monsters and cleansing them of the pestilence infecting them. Pestilence is infecting them? Yeah, this is definitely Earth. We got a chance to play about an hour of Kena in which we ventured into the wild surrounding the village in search of one of the spirits called Taina. Moment to moment, the game feels like a mix of a variety of action-adventure staples, like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in its fluid melee combat, and Uncharted or Tomb Raider in its occasional environmental puzzles and climbing portions. Those inspirations are used well though, with fluid gameplay and fast-paced combat that- I'm glad he said they're balanced well. That of course would be in the hands of whoever's playing you know it's freedom of whatever you believe but i really don't like portions like that in games like god of war and stuff they're a bit annoying so you know let's see that's deceptively simple but can get deadly in a hurry as you venture out so in I search like, of okay. spirits you're looking to help you'll encounter enemies animated with the corruption the ones we saw tended to be creatures made out of twisted chunks of wood the bigger they are the, the designs are looking really good i must say like I'm looking at it, it looks really and good. And while you can beat them down to defeat them, your main goal in a lot of fights is to locate red hearts corrupting the area and destroy those with Kana's spirit guide powers. In okay. some situations, hearts will continue to spawn enemies, so locating them and getting rid of them, they look like mini groups. them is the only way to get yourself out of a battle. Two things set Kana apart from similar games, its cinematic presentation and the rot. The first is born of... I wait. Oh, I noticed those little those Similar little games. black things it's popping up. Presentation and the rot. The first is born of developer Ember Studios' background in animation before it started making video games, and you can really feel how much Kana has derived from animated films in both its cinematics and gameplay. Yeah, yeah, I was saying that it kind of looks like the Disney animated films. It's the rot that are really the star of the show. These little folks are spirits of yeah, decay, but not in a frightening, horrific way. Instead. They're more like the keepers of balance, recycling dead things to renew life. And as Kana's trailers have shown, they're exceedingly cute. Yeah. I just want to, I know this is, but this is how, this is a bit more, I'm going to say this in every reaction video, I think, esoteric knowledge again, but these are actually the new gods the form of the new gods so you know you have like um uh the norse you got you know hem i think it's hemdal or is that i don't know what mythology but you got mimir balder freya <laughs> i'm naming off the god of war ones that they showcase but there's many tier um bunch bunch but the reason i wanted to bring it up is because these are the new gods when any when you see anything created in media they are created entities by people because you make your own gods and goddesses so all of these things that like a lot of the intent and work that goes into a lot of these games even like kyle crane from dying light is an entity so these little buggers right here that they recycle dead things he said or something like that these could be inspired off of 
entities that have existed before, like the same energies. And funny, me bringing up Groot earlier, I actually just learned that about Groot. There was a video I found where someone actually found the entity that Groot is. And funny enough, so many people like bought into how cute Groot was, just like Baby Yoda. And that's because he's a form of the new gods. Groot is something you can actually call upon Groot's energy to aid you. Because that's what all these things are. These are energies and entities created by people that are just out there and there's many different entities you so could, like them you could literally believe that they are impacting your life in a certain way seriously the- same with Groot I think Groot was a protection and something to do with nature I can't remember the whole thing about Groot but basically the real Groot entity that it, like that maybe they not didn't know it was based off but like remember and um is the whole thing with matter and that whole saying that it's nor created nor destroyed or whatever something like that is it's constantly recycled it's basically like that it was an ancient picture of literally what they designed in marvel's the but there's a bunch of stuff <sighs> i'm about to see this is why i said i stopped doing commentary but the reason i wanted to say that is like yes you make your own entities so the environment hidden under rocks yeah or tucked in corners the more rot you find to join you the more powerful they become Kina's staff serves as a weapon, and she's able to use it to release pulses of energy that can clear the corruption in the world around her, but it also allows her to guide the rot around sink. the world. So you'll use them to move objects and solve puzzles, to fix items, and even to fight enemies. In combat, the rot want okay. to come to your aid, but they're small and not particularly strong, so you need to pump them up a bit to get them ready for a spat. You do that by hitting and defeating enemies to build up a courage meter. When it's full, the rock can perform an action. <laughs> they need courage. You can send them out to attack an enemy or interact with an object that can help you, like blue flowers scattered around battlefields that can restore your health. According to Ember Studios, rot attacks have different effects depending on the enemy. For some, they might do damage. They might do damage. For some, others, they might stun. They're a distraction that can help you take the pressure off or open stun. them up for attack. Okay. You can also turn the rot into a weapon you can fully control under the right circumstances. Find a large droplet of water, and the rot can use it to turn themselves into a sort of spirit amoeba, which you can guide around the battlefield. In this form, <laughs> That's a really weird way to put it, but okay. The rot can wail on enemies, move objects, and attack hearts, making them vulnerable for you to destroy them. The rot are a huge part of the game, leveling up as you find more and more of them. As you defeat enemies and help to fix the world, you earn karma that allows you to unlock new karma. abilities and actions, and the rot are a big part. I like how their take on stuff, or the game developers take on, like, karma, courage meter, yada yada, the rot recycling, said things, or whatever they did. I forgot what he said. But, you know what's funny? Um, oh, no, nah, it's not what's funny, but it's kind of funny. Can you have an infinite amount of these guys? Two. I want to As know we that. were playing, we unlocked an ability called Rot Hammer, where Kana channels the rot to swirl around her staff and then slams it into an enemy for a big, powerful hit. Karma upgrades these abilities even further, giving you more options to mix the rot in with your fighting rot. style. But even out of combat, the rot are an essential part of Kana's journey. You might find objects blocking your way, and often you'll need to send the rot to clear the path. Throughout the forest surrounding the village, you'll find things like damaged shrines or knocked over statues. But with the rot's help, you can repair those things. Cat statue. Fixing them gives you more karma, so it's worth exploring the environment and leaving the main path so that you can find new things to interact with. Cool. The theme of restoration and repair runs throughout Kana. As cool. we climbed up a mountain, I would expect that from a game based on like for Taro's being relics a spirit guy. Spirit, we found places where the rot could move statues to solve puzzles or take on the amoeba form to water crops. <laughs> really focused on <laughs> growth nurturing working together they quickly become your friendly companions when you jump and climb ledges the rot will appear to watch you and cheer you on and you can find and buy hats for them to wear to make them feel a little more distinct controlling the rot is surprisingly intuitive in most cases even in the midst of combat at times it's like having a second character to control but combat doesn't cease for kana when you start moving the rot around the battlefield so you have to divide your attention to keep yourself safe Kana's a deft fighter, though. In addition to a right, fast light ringing. attack and a stronger charged-up heavy attack, she can also create a shield of energy around herself and use that to parry incoming attacks. 
Later, like, you unlock a bow version of your staff that allows you to snipe at enemies and take. Yeah, I was about to say that. I like how the staff is like is like the bow. We played through a. Couple it only almost reminds me of I don't know his name. I don't want to get it wrong, but from Mortal Kombat. A couple big fights against tough. It's like Kung Lao's um. Kung Lao's nephew mini boss enemies and despite the game's often bright Kung presentation Jin. and the cuteness of the rot kana bridge of spirits didn't pull any punches enemies are fast and deadly especially the big ones and they require you to concentrate on smartly using your abilities and the rot as well as timing your dodges and parries to stay spots. alive the combat looks it's really good to combat, me though. a lot of kana is spent exploring its lush beautiful world and interacting with its spirits and characters. Searching for Tano's relics provides you with insight into what happened to him through his memories and his relatives, serving up some tragic backstory to the situation. That also fills in that the gaps of what happened to the dope. village itself, and you're also piecing together Kana's personal history along the way. Those moments are often told in powerful cutscenes that draw from the animation background of the story. Yo, it literally looks like a Disney movie. Creating cinematics that help make the whole game feel like you're traveling through an animated movie. Yeah, seriously. Meditation. I meditate in the morning and right before I go to bed. Really powerful. While Kana draws from a lot of I'm glad a lot of this stuff is being incorporated in games now. I hear a lot of games and game developers talking about manifestation and stuff. It's a change into the times. Old souls are back. Inspirations, the way it weaves its ideas together makes for an enthralling, deep feeling adventure that seems like it'll satisfy both players who are interested in its story and world and those who want a challenge in combat challenge and exploration. Combat. Although, difficulty options will allow you to tweak the experience to your liking so it won't overwhelm you. Kana, Bridge of Spirits, is set to release on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC through the Epic Game Store in August. Okay. Ground yourself. Ground yourself. The energy of the mountain. Okay, they paid attention to detail with the whole how you you can okay. So no you're not gonna be glowing blue, but you can envision it. And actually you're actually doing stuff for yourself, your electromagnetic field, your aura. But you can ground yourself. You can go outside in your backyard right now, plant your feet in the dirt, and literally like regulate your body it's called grounding draw on its power they got her veins glowing oh is this how she got the bow bound bow skyrim spell is it like a is it like supposed to be like kind of like Native American. Cause I'm Native American, so I'm kinda, I'm kinda. You know, I'm much more than that. That's just what it is given here on this planet. But I'm liking that. I'm actually liking that. I like he said I would play for. You know, maybe I'd get lost in the story. Maybe if I like streamed it and literally played it, I would, I would definitely get lost in the story probably while I was playing um but if I was like playing to just play I'd probably play for the combat I would definitely explore because in games or combat I still explore but I wouldn't pay attention too much to the story I would kind of like run through it but this is something that's kind of has to do with spirits and when games handle this stuff I like to see if you know if they throw their little things in and like I said, boom, they had the meditation and grounding, which surprised me. And a lot of games are doing that now, but I definitely like to. Anything is really everything is what you believe, but there's ancient text and ancient knowledge with spirituality that where everything comes from that, you know, you have to turn to spirituality sooner or later. So I like to just see if they got their facts right, but I'm liking this. And yeah, so that's Ken of Bridge of Spirits on GameSpot. Subscribe to them. And yeah, you guys know who I am. So I will see you in the next one. Peace.